What is good, my friends? Welcome to part 10 of the Chris Chan and Alec Benson Larry phone call series. Now, the thing is, we're already on part 10. We've covered a lot of this, and we still got a lot to go because when all things are said and done, we're going to be at about part 20. You know, we got, we got a lot to cover here. And so where we last left off, Alec had given Chris another list of tons of things he had to apologize for. But then before it ended, Alec dropped another bombshell that Chris, you know, I want you to apologize for drawing me as a kidnapper of rose chews, keeping them locked up in my basement and all this. Like, I don't know where you got this from. And in classic Chris fashion, he's going to attempt to explain where he got this wild idea from because, I mean, it's Chris, you know? He's probably just thinking of anything he can try to get this guy on. But, like I said, that's where we left off, and we're going to jump right back into it now. All I want to say is what I do at the beginning of all these, if you want to listen to this without my commentary, the full, whole box set of these calls is in the description down below, so go check them out there. And yeah, uh, the Discord's down below if you guys want to join it, Twitch channel's down below if y'all want to come over and follow that. Other than that, let's jump right into it, y'all, and get back into this phone call. Okay, good. That's good so far. Um, I'd also like you to apologize for insinuating that I keep female prisoners in my basement and use them as a unwilling harem and rape them, because I don't do anything of the sort. That's just creepy. I don't... I don't know where you got that idea. I mean, I can kind of see some of the other complaints that you had were based on, you know, like, direct misunderstanding of things, but, but the, you know, me raping female prisoner things. That just... That, that came out of left field. Where'd you get yeah, that idea? Yeah, okay, well... Okay, well, actually... No, uh, I never said I never used the word rape. You just had them in prison and you treat them like hamsters. You did not rape them. What do you mean I treat them like hamsters? hamsters? You know, just keep them in cages, giant hamster wheels, giant water bottles, and food pellets. Okay. Um, even if you didn't use the word rape. What do you think people, what do you think the impression is people are going to get when you suggest that someone keeps female prisoners in their basement? They're going to think that um, said prisoners are being raped by their captor. And I mean, that seems like a pretty obvious insinuation, even if you don't use the word directly. Okay. Uh, all right, anything else after that? God, his his explanation never ceases to make me crack up. You know, the fact that Chris thought, you know, no, no, Alec, I did, I didn't say you did all that stuff. You know, what I said was you kept him captive like a bunch of hamsters <laughs> with giant wheels and giant water bottles. You know, it's completely different than what you thought I meant. <laughs> You know, it's and that's the one thing Chris is like really willing to put his foot down on. You know, as soon as Alec brought it up, Chris is like, yeah, well, no. No, actually, I said that you kept them like hamsters, you know? You don't... It's, it's, it's just really, like... I don't, I don't know how to describe that. I don't really know how to, how to respond to that. It's just so fucking wacky, you know? Because you know Chris definitely thought, like, he's in the right here. Like, no, no, that's not what I meant at all. Even though you had them locked in your basement, there was no ill mean behind it, you know? I was just saying you had them there like hamsters. <laughs> oh, God. And then on top of all that, Chris just like, he, like he does with every other thing he's apologizing for, he just hears about it, goes, oh, okay, all right, what's the next thing, you know? Just not even acknowledging that this is a much more like darker thing to talk about than everything else, you know, stealing comic book characters and calling him naive. This is a little, this is on a different level, Chris's accusations here, but they're just going to sweep it under the rug and move on. I wish Alec would have pressed him on this a little more. I think he does eventually, but, you know, I would not let Chris just be like, ah, no, no, Chris, we're not just going to move on. Like, please, please explain your thought and rationale behind saying that because it's just, you know, he, he, there's no way Chris didn't mean anything malicious by that. You know, it's just, he's been saying that this whole phone call, he's been trying to find reasons to be mad at Alec. And you know, that's one where he probably thought and was like, I got it. I got it. It's all those hamster like Rose two being kept in his basement. That's the zinger. Um, I am still trying to think, um, you know, I I apologize for 
for seeming like I'm beating a dead horse, but I I am a little suspicious that you seem so agreeable because um, in all our previous correspondences, you've been um, you know insulting, rude, or manipulative, or a combination thereof. But now it seems like you know you're you're just rearing to go with this. Are you sure you're just not like trying to that. finish the phone call with me quickly? Because no, like I'm not trying to finish anything. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to finish this phone call. I want to put this to rest. Okay. Well, good. Because, like I said, if you do all these things perfectly, as I say, um, then yeah. my, my ads will go away. Um, oh. But if but if you make a video and you're missing anything, or if you deliberately contradict something. Um, or if I feel like you are trying to pull a fast one on me and weasel out of something, then the ads are going to get worse. Because at this point, okay. I do have to assume that anything that goes wrong is a deliberate um, evil intent on your part. Let's see. Do you, I mean, that's a okay. fair assumption for me to make, don't you think? Considering how much you, you have, bullied you and have, to you me. have the right, you have the right to make that assumption. You see, when Alec brings up to Chris that you know you seem really gung ho on this, that you're really just raring to go um, on all these apologies, it's just it, it really does speak to the fact that at this point Chris is just so sick of this, and he's probably willing to say whatever to get this guy from stop calling him. You know, somebody commented it on one of the um on the videos yesterday. Said so, did this guy just call Chris randomly, like just throughout the weeks, and just be like, hey, Chris, it's me. Let's talk now. Um, I think so. I think so for the most part. There are other parts. Um, there are the beginnings of certain phone calls, which I don't know if we've got to them yet, I actually don't even remember, where Chris is like, oh, Alec, you know, I'm eating some chicken right now, so I kind of can't talk, like, uh, but other times, you know, it, they seem like they had a direct time where they were supposed to call each other, um, I just don't know why I'm going off on that tangent right now, but my favorite part about what we just listened to right there, um, other than Chris being, like, really ready to just fucking give any apology that he, Alec wants him to give, is at the very end there, where Alec's like, you know, Chris, I really, if anything goes wrong here, I I'm going to assume that you're just doing this maliciously because you've done this this whole time. And Chris doesn't even, without a shadow of a doubt, without a split second, Chris is like, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're, you're very right to assume that because even Chris knows that he's been very, uh, he's been very swindly. He's been very snakish during this whole situation. And even though the stuff Alec is asking him to apologize for, for the most part, is all ridiculous and just trivial shit that he's trying to make up because he's a troll at the end of the day. Uh, Chris, Chris at this point is even in agreement with this guy that, yeah, you know, I did, uh, I did try to, like, you know, get out of this a bunch of times. We're not even gonna, we're not gonna lie about that one. So, like I said, we're at this point where Chris has talked to this guy so much that a little bit of truth is starting to come out, but you won't get too much more of it. Okay. Okay, well, good. Oh, excuse me just a second. Sorry about that. I'm back. Um, All right. Can I ask you why you think the word naive is so horrible? Not only does the word sound like nails on nails on a chalkboard when one says it, but also it questions one's intelligence and experience in life. I, I think it actually only questions experience. It's not about intelligence. Yeah, at all. yeah, but yeah, but experience versus knowledge. It's still implied the knowledge part. Well, no, knowledge is different from intelligence. Yeah, but also similarly, it can sound like you know calling somebody stupid, or well, worse than that. Well, you know, no pun intended here, but if you. If you believe that, then I think you kind of are naive. I mean, because that that you you don't have a you know, an understanding of the word. I looked it up in a dictionary, and I have the understanding of the word. I, I don't know what dictionary you looked up that suggested it's a direct questioning of one's intelligence. It's always funny to see Chris getting put in his place about something that he knows nothing about yet cares about so deeply. It happens quite a lot. And with the word naive, it's something you see a lot, you know, because he, with Chris, this whole call in every, in every, like, 
social interaction you ever hear him in. He's very timid. He's very, like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But with Naive here, he was so quick to be like, yeah, well, you know, thought, uh, what is it, intelligence versus knowledge. You know, it is implied and all that. Like, when the fuck did he learn to talk like this? I mean, I feel like he only can talk, like, seriously and in depth it's slightly in depth even though he doesn't even know what the word means about things that he actually cares about if he doesn't care about it he's just not going to even want to talk about it but when alec brings up here you know that you don't you don't even know the meaning of the word you hate so much and chris is uh he's adamant that he does but it just shows it's one of these many things that chris does where he's he brought it up at first, you know, if he just left it off at it sounds like nails on a chalkboard, that would have been fine because that's why he hates the word so much. And then when he says that, you know, it's basically like calling someone stupid, uh, you know, it, it, it's Chris at the end of the day. Chris, when you act like this, you know, it's not, it's not too... Like, you get that Chris doesn't like being called dumb, he doesn't like being told that he's not, he's not, like, intelligent, but at the same time, you know, any rational person hears these conversations, they're just gonna be like, what the fuck, like, this guy's out of it, he doesn't know what he's talking about at all, and Alec points that out to him and points out, you know, if that's how you really think, then you kind of are naive, you know, and, um, now we're gonna jump back into it and see, see the real definition that Alec brings up from the dictionary. I mean, let me look it up on, uh, an online dictionary here. Um, let's see, lacking experience or, or judgments, that's really not about intelligence. And, um, I am still kind of bothered that, you know, you think it's such a horrible insult, but you wanted to use it on me. Mm, okay, and well, you, you happily... Though, you, you, okay, well, still, in my defense, though, you did tell me to, you did say will call me naive during that particular conversation. Yeah, that little line right there should just tell anyone how out of it Chris is and has always been. You know, someone saying in passing sarcastically in a comment, like, well, I know I know, it may sound crazy, so call me naive, but, you know, I'm just... And Chris hears that and he's like, oh, cool, I can call this dude naive now whatever the fuck I want. It's, um... It's something that only Chris would think is, like, acceptable. Something only Chris would think is, like, the the truth is what this guy's saying. You can't, like, any normal person would hear a person say that. Just know off the bat sarcasm. But Chris, he's trying to use it here as an excuse to, as the reason he called this guy naive so much. Now, does Chris really believe that, that this guy actually asked him to call him naive? I don't know. I don't know. But you can just, but the way Chris's thought process always works, you have to believe that there is maybe a part of him deep down inside that was like, oh, well, he said it, and so that means I can do it. You know, maybe Chris wasn't even listening to that conversation, and his ears perked up when he heard the words, call me naive, because he was like, oh, cool, now I have an out to call this guy insults and stuff. So who knows? Who knows? But it's just one of those things where you, I just can't believe Chris uses that as an excuse. Um, you know, that's just a turn of phrase, right? I wasn't actually asking you to call me naive. Okay. Well, you gave me the opportunity, so that's my defense right there. You I should. The greatest agree on that. You should exercise some personal responsibility, though, because, you know, you think naive oh, is okay. such a horrible thing. Like, have you ever heard the phrase, uh, just shoot me? Like, you know, if someone's frustrated, they'll say, just shoot me. I mean, if someone said that in your presence, would you feel, you know, okay with, well, I'll just pull out a gun and shoot him? No, not ne no, I would not necessarily shoot them. Not necessarily. Does that mean you'd consider it? Mm. No, I would not shoot them at all. Well, I should hope not. I mean, you've shot people in your comic before. I hope you wouldn't shoot them in real life. Alec bringing up the people that Chris has shot in his comic, he's talking about Liquid Chris in that like whole situation where Casey was mad at Chris because Chris shot Liquid in the legs so him and Casey could get away, and Chris's whole thing was, you know, it was only in the leg, and I, I call 911 right afterwards to make sure he's okay. When you know deep down inside, Chris wishes he could just put like a thousand shots in this dude you know he, he hates all these people but when he brings this up when alec brings up you know you you wouldn't really shoot people in real life there's this weird pause chris takes where he's kind of you can tell he's he's going through every troll thinking of every scenario thinking clyde cash liquid chris like thinking of all these people who you know he'd love to fucking take down but then he just has to go 
No, I would not do that in real life. When <laughs> like I'm telling you, he's thinking about it. He's thinking it. Now, you can say, you know, it's Chris's brain. He's probably not thinking anything. He's just slow, but... I don't know, man. The, the little pause he does there and how quick he's to respond to everything else, it just makes me think that he's really thinking like, hmm, maybe there are a few people, but I'm just going to say no because it would make me look bad if I said anything different. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know. You can you can tell Chris is, um, it's not going to be the first time he's going to do some really violent stuff in his comic, and Alex going to find that out firsthand pretty soon. Date. Anyway, uh, Alright, so anything else from this video or I mean because you know, aside from what I've read to you before, I apologize for labeling you as having female prisoners in your basement and raping. Um yes, uh there's another item. I'd like you to admit that you don't have a good excuse to not upload pages every day. I mean, I think that's correct, right? You don't have a job. You don't go to school. I have both, you know, school and a job, and I upload every day. Yeah. In my defense, though, actually, yesterday, I actually went on a nice uh, day with a nice girl, and it was a, it was a great day. It could have not gone better. Oh. Um, what was the date? Like, all day? I mean... It wasn't like in the morning, was it? You could have uploaded in the morning. Yeah, well, I was, yeah, well, I was not up in the morning. Chris saying that, you know, he automatically jumps to, well, in my defense, I was on a date. I was on a date with this really pretty girl, and it could not have gone better. I wonder what date this was around this time. I'm very, uh, I don't think it would have been something, maybe it would have been something with Emily and them when they took him out to one of those bars and got him, like, alcoholic drinks for the first time. I'd assume it's around that period, but I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. Um, I don't think it was the Pickle Man. That was way too early. Um... So who knows what type of date Chris was on, but Alec, like I said, Alec rightly brings up, like he said, you were on a date all day long, like why didn't you just do it in the morning? And after Chris says, you know, in my defense, because he's trying to defend himself from the accusations of him being lazy and not, you know, uploading these pages on time or nothing, Chris has the nerve to say, yeah, well, you know, I wasn't up in the morning. So it's like, dude, if you really wanted these pages out and you're going to defend yourself on it, maybe just get up in the morning and upload them. It's not that hard. But it's just, I don't know, man. At the end of the day, Chris was never going to work on anyone else's time frame anyway. When he got the, the itch to draw some Sonichu, he was going to draw it. For the most part, though, he probably just wanted to sit around, play video games, and not do anything that took even the slightest bit of effort. Because that's, you know, that's Chris's whole mindset. He didn't want to look at Sonichu as a job. He wanted to do it when he wanted to do it and how he wanted to do it. I always uh, point back to there's this video Chris did not too long ago. But when I say not too long ago, I mean like in the past five, maybe ten years, you know, not in the old days when the Alex shit was going on or the Liquid Chris shit. Like it was somewhat recent and uh, Chris thought he was going to get a job with like Sega or someone. Maybe it was Nintendo, maybe it was Sega, but I remember the demands he made. Uh, it's something like, I would need a, um, <laughs> I would need like an assistant, I would need a hundred thousand dollars. I would need to be able to, and this was the one I'll never forget, because he's looking down at the ground, he's looking like he doesn't even care, kind of like these people just owe him the world, being like, and I need to be able to work from home, and when I want, and it's just like, what? Like, Could you imagine walking into any job interview and just being like, I need this amount of money, this crazy amount of money, I want an assistant to do all the grunt work, and I, oh, and they <laughs> I almost forgot one of the other excuses he uses in that video is because he's on a love, he's looking for his girlfriend and he needs to spend a lot of time looking for a girlfriend. But yeah, that little line though about, you know, working from home and when I want, I'll never forget that. And it reminds me of here anytime he talks about Sonichu because that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to work any time of the day that he doesn't want to. He wants to maybe stay up late at night and when he doesn't want to go to sleep, be like, hey, you know, I'll draw a bunch of Sonichu stuff right now half-assed because I'm just tired and I'm bored, but I kind of got to itch to do it so that's how chris's uh, work rate would work you know that's why he never wanted to look at sonic as a job because he knew the second he did he would have to actually sit down and do stuff on a daily basis and that was just too much for him to handle um you didn't have you know any time what time did you wake up how long do you sleep uh, I got, yeah i got about 
eleven. Well, and I had late. to go out my had to go and I actually had to go out to uh, run a couple of errands, I had to go to the grocery store and also I had to get my family some antifreeze for their car. Okay. Well I I have chores. And, of course, and, course, and and then with and then with that I also had to take a shower and make make myself fully ready for the date. Um you know, when I when I shower and, and clean myself up that takes like twenty minutes. I I I, like I said, I have a job in school, and I have errands to do, and I go out with people, and I go on dates, and I still make sure I upload every day. I mean, Sonic Chew is your... Think of think of it this way. Sonic Chew is going to be your big franchise. That's what's going to make you money, right? Um, so you, you should treat it like it is your, your day-to-day job. Yeah. And yeah. You, when was the last day that you uploaded a page? It's been about a week, hasn't it? I mean, even if you had, well, you know, it might, it might just, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I did update the Wikipedia day before yesterday. With the new comic page, upload, but I made an update. What kind of update did you make? I uh, believe it was a captain's log or a quote update. Well, a quote, really? Okay. I mean, what does that take? Yeah, I mean, what. Yeah, everything Alec is bringing up is, like, logical stuff, you know? If you have stuff you need to do, do it in the morning before you have stuff to do at night, you know? If you have to shower and do all these errands, maybe try to make them a little quicker, you know? It's not hard to take a quick shower, but for Chris, it seemingly took all afternoon. And, um, again, though, Chris, you can hear him start to say it at one point that, well, in my defense, like, he just keeps trying to, like, obviously, any normal person is going to want to defend themselves in these situations. But when Chris is so wrong, you can't submit... All right, you know, I messed up, I messed up, that's my fault. He just keeps trying to find excuse after excuse after excuse. But the thing was, the question Alec asked was, you haven't even uploaded any Sonichu pages in a week, and Alec, I guess, at the time was uploading every day. This is Chris's competition, you know, Chris should be on the ball with this. <laughs> you know, even though it's a bunch of troll stuff, to Chris, this is serious work. And when he brings up, you know, why haven't you uploaded in a week, Chris, of course, responds with, you know, well, in my defense, I, I put a quote up there. I don't even know what the quote was. It was probably just like zap him to the extreme or something up on top. And that should be, in Chris's mind, that's enough for people to go, all right, awesome, cool. That 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 does me in for the week. I love Sonichu so much. Not knowing that people would be like, what? Like, where, where's my Sonichu pages? If they really cared, which they didn't. But it will just never get old seeing Chris flop around like a fish trying to figure out what he has to say next and just trying to come up with any type of bullshit excuse he can come up with. Because he'll he'll keep pulling them out of the hat one by one by one as these calls go on. We still got hours left of him him friggin' flailing around like this. I mean, I would have gone for it to answer letters in the email, to answer mailbag letters, but... I just yeah, you got, the mail, you got the mailbag. I, I, just, I, just, I, just could not, I just could not stand the uh, image... That was plaguing. That was plaguing my Wikipedia that uh, Mal put up. Um, I just cannot stand that. You know, Chris, if we confront our demons head on and defeat them, we come out stronger on the other side. You won't accomplish anything by running from the ads just because they're unpleasant to look at. I mean, why? You, you know, this is the internet. You've seen tons of unpleasant crap. I'm sure I have doesn't stop me from going on the internet. See, now we're just running in circles here because Chris and Alec are talking to each other so Chris can get all these ads that he doesn't like off the website. In order to do that, Chris has to apologize for all these things that he's been doing wrong to Alec. And um, one of the things Alec wants him to apologize for is not drawing enough Sonichu pages. And the reason Chris says that he won't do that is because he's so sick of seeing all these ads on his page. So like I said, just just run it in a circle here. <laughs> and um, it's just clear that, you know, these ads, if Chris is saying that it's, it's so discombobulating, they're so bad that he can't even go on his own website, then it's like, Chris, just, just apologize for these things. Like, it's not, he has to do everything half-assed, though. He has to, like, pretend like, no, he has to keep his pride, you know, he can't, he can't apologize for all these, like, all these things that he doesn't think he has to apologize for. If you're just in this situation, be like, oh, yeah, sorry for this, sorry for this, sorry for this, you cool, you're taking it down, not cool, see ya, get on your merry way, whatever. And then you forget you even talk to that person, you know, but Chris, he just has to take the hard way with every single thing that happens here um <laughs> like i said he he hates these ads so much but he's not willing to do like anything these people ask him to do to get rid of them 
Uh, it's, it's just the classic Chris way. He just wants to snap his fingers and make everything be the way he wants it to be. It'll never change. Um, and, and like I said, Sonic, you is serious business. It's your job. You yeah. should, and jo- jobs are difficult. Jobs are hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've had, I've had plenty of hard jobs. Like you, I don't think you have any real work experience, right? But, um, trust me, jobs are difficult. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is there anything else? And see, I've been saying it in every single part of these calls, you know, that the second serious stuff gets brought up, the second, you know, Sonichu becoming a job gets brought up, Chris does not want to hear it. And that's exactly what Alec is doing right there, bringing up that, you know, if you really want Sonichu to make you money, if you want it to be as big as you think it deserves to be, well, then treat it like your job, you know? And he brings up, too, he brings up that, I know you don't have a lot of work experience, so I'll tell you that jobs can be hard, Chris. And Chris, just like I said, he's just subtly and very quietly, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah, because he doesn't know what he he doesn't know what to say because he's worked at Wendy's once. He did the Cutco stuff. Now, I'd imagine a job at Wendy's is, is pretty ass. It probably sucks. But at the same time, it's not like this crazy, like difficult job that honestly, I probably doubt Alex ever had one of them either. But at the same time, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's just something that as soon as it gets brought up, Chris is once again willing to be like, all right, well, what else now? What else? Because he does not want to talk about this. This is not fun and games and this has nothing to do with my advertisements getting taken off this page so uh no serious talk from chris he doesn't want to hear it um like i said you know take simona out of the comic and in the comic apologize to me and now and evan for for everything that i've listed yeah and okay. I, 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 I have the list here um, can I ask you what you're going to do to get your fans back? Because you've lost a lot of fans to me, but and I know you want them back. Yeah, well, I'm going to continue my I'm going to continue my work and make my updates. Okay. Well, you said that a lot, and your update pattern has drastically dropped in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. It's un- it's unreal how much of a bullshitter Chris is. Because like, he'll sit here and, you know, you know, even he just talked about how he doesn't want to look at Sonichu as a job, you know, all that. And you can tell that when he's just saying, when he's saying these things to Alec, you know, Alec brings up, well, what are you going to do to to get Sonichu, like, big again and all that? And he just says, well, I'm going to keep working and doing all this stuff. He's just thinking of, like, the, the type of things you want someone to hear, you know? He's just, once again, I keep saying it, but he just wants to hang up the phone. He he wants this guy to think, oh, he's serious about this. Cool. Guess I don't got to talk to him about it no more. But that's not the case. It's not the case at all. And when Alec even brings up to him, yeah, you've never done that. You always say that, and you never do this. Chris has nothing to reply with other than, like usual, yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know what the hell is going to happen. I mean, it seems like... Think of it this way, Chris. I'm, you know, I'm your competition, obviously. Um, and... It seems that with you know one little series of unpleasant to look at ads, I have completely shut down my competition. Now I'm a nice guy and I'm trying to help you. And the average artist out there who's your competition sure as hell is not going to try to help you. So imagine what would happen if they found out you know oh all I have to do is buy some ad space on his wiki and put up a, an ad he doesn't like looking at, and that'll just stop his comic production entirely. I mean, are my ads really the only reason that you haven't uploaded pages in a week? Yeah, well, that and your very, yeah, busy day yesterday. The very dirt, the, yeah, the very dirty ones, yeah. Um, pardon me for being blunt, but that sounds kind of pathetic, don't you think? See, now, at this point, Chris is really just, like, ignoring all this advice from Alec. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to listen to any of this. Because now, even though Alec is a troll, what he's saying here couldn't be more more true. You know, Chris, you're you're claiming that all your work, the thing you've, you want to claim is your life's work. You're, you're so proud of it. You, you want people to love it. You want it to become your big, your big money maker. It was all shut down in a matter of seconds when a bunch of gay ads were placed on there. And Chris is just, he really will say yeah you know the really vulgar ones were enough to just make me not want to do anything for the week and you know 
like I said, it's Alec brings up, like, Chris, this is something that was, Chris is going to deal with for the rest of his days, uh, or at least the next 15 years after this phone call, is that when someone wants to mess with Chris, all they have to do is put up something that he doesn't like, and he'll stop whatever he's doing and just freak out and bitch and moan about it. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, but as long as it's something that Chris really doesn't like, it'll just cease whatever he's doing so that he can spend all of his time complaining about that and trying to get it taken down, just like he's doing right here. And, um, you know, it's... Like, like Alex said, it is pathetic of Chris, but calling Chris pathetic like that and calling this situation pathetic, I wonder how Chris would respond to that. I bet you he has a, he has a right hand, a right hand of an insult ready to knock Alec cold. Takes one and no one. Takes one what? Pathetic person? I, I wouldn't consider Thank myself you. pathetic because I have, you know, 30,000 fans. A good number of which I, I took from you, so I don't think I'm pathetic at all. I mean, why do you think I'm pathetic? Hmm. I do not have any reason at the moment. Well, or like you know, yeah, you you did pretty much had pretty much had to consider yourself weak to you know to to think you know to have your own bunch of fans to steal someone else's. Um, how else do you think fans come around, Chris? How else do you think any new franchise gets fans? Like, you know Chris thought he had him with that childlike insult, you know? Yeah, well, takes one to know one, I guess. Like, and, and Alec brings up, takes one what? Like, it's I, I just said this whole situation is pathetic, but Chris doesn't even have an answer for that. He's just kind of like, just stays quiet because he knows that he kind of fumbled over his own insult. And then, you know, he just gives this, like, this weird, this weird spiel about how, you know, you must consider yourself weak because you took all of my fans. That makes you weak that you would take someone else's fans. Not realizing that it makes you weak for losing all of your fans so easily to some new guy. Alec brings up that he has over 30,000 loyal fans of his. Which, to be fair, if there were 30,000 fans of Alec, those are 30,000 trolls of Chris that claim to be fans of Alec, you know? Same thing that happened with when Chris came on the scene, all of a sudden, all these accounts were like, wow, look at this dude. This dude's so awesome, you know? So it's good to have some trolls there that are going to be all around to mess with Chris at any point of the day, calling themselves fans of yours. That's not really the point. It's just something that stuck out to me when he said 30,000 fans. I highly doubt there were 30,000 trolls out there that are trying to get Chris at the time. I think I'm just a little too high and thinking too much into it. But like I said, at the end there, Chris tries to sound like so, I don't know what the word, he tries to sound like a badass, he tries to sound smart, but he's just, he always fumbles over himself, you know? He's trying to make it sound like, you know, hey, you know, you may have done all this work and I may have done nothing, but the fact that my fans went to you makes you the pathetic one, makes you weak. And, um, and like Alec brings up, how else are you supposed to get fans, you know? It's, 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 it's the way of the world, Chris. And it's something that Chris does not understand, you know? All of Chris... Chris's quote-unquote fans, the people who probably actually kind of liked Sonic, all were fans of Sonic and Pikachu before they were fans of, uh, of Chris's work. I guarantee you that, if there are any fans out there of it in general. But at the end of the day, it's always important to remember, Alec is a troll. He's just messing with Chris. Chris is taking all this extremely serious. So we're going to try to look at it from Chris's point of view in these calls. And that's what I try to do, even though it's really hard to do because, you know, it's Chris. No one knows what's going on in his mind and uh, no one's ever going to understand that dude. Sadly, though, my friends, this is the part of the video where we are going to wrap it up, but we'll be right back at it tomorrow with much more of this phone call, and I hope you guys come around to enjoy it then, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, too. So, with that being said, i got to give my shouts out, and we're going to start with the homegirl Vanessa, Krabby, your mom, Sky. Cody Hale, the Ghostbusters fan, Club Doom, Akiba's Beat fan, Scaly Schisms, Echo Spectre, Mick Surly, The Night Owl, Isaiah, Kaitan, Finland's Party Place, Churlish, Music Biz, Marty's Bong, Pythea, Moochie, Grant M, Sky Fitzpatrick, Adrian, all right, Stingy and Chris Chan's Fanta Bottle. <laughs> That'll never get old. We got Music Biz Marty's Bong, Chris Chan's Fanta Bottle. You know, I, I won't be surprised if we get Cyrax's Stylus next, but we'll find out when that <laughs> when that comes, uh, if it ever comes. Let's hope it doesn't. But 
yeah, if you've made it to the end of this video, y'all, you guys are all goats. I, I say it at the end of every single one of these, but thank you for uh, thank you for chilling here. Thank you for uh, just 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 sticking around, and enjoying these. If you do, uh, it means a lot that, to know that you know some people out there are genuinely getting some enjoyment from this. All that matters, ladies and gentlemen, is that you're laughing. That's all. All I want to do here in these videos is to make sure that it's like a 30 minutes of your day that you can just laugh and have a good time and not worry about the bullshit going on in the world. So, with that being said, as I do an every video. I'm going to sign off here and tell the rest of y'all that I hope you have a great rest of your week. Tomorrow's Friday. The weekend's fastly approaching, ladies and gentlemen. Before you know it, you're going to be kicking your feet up, smoking a fat, fat blunt. If you don't smoke, have something. Maybe have, maybe have your favorite dinner. If you don't if you don't smoke, but you kind of drink, go have a nice beer. Go Just go relax and have a good time this weekend. I hope I hope that's all I hope for all y'all is just have a nice time and not worry about a damn thing. So until the next one, y'all, I'm out of here. Take care and stay safe safe, my friends.